Thank you so much, Albert. Uh, well, I have the pleasure and also unlucky position of being that last speaker who comes before lunch. So I'm going to introduce myself now. Uh, my name's Susanna Shattuck, and I actually love, uh, Albert, that you teed me up so perfectly uh, with your talk about everything that is challenging and, and really posing major, major roadblocks to AI adoption today. Um, I'm here to hopefully talk about some of the solutions that we can uh, adopt to address the very real challenges that, that Albert was speaking about. Um, so for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna be giving an overview of the current regulatory landscape of AI uh, to, to address your question around the mismatch between uh, regulation, the speed of regulation and the speed of innovation. AI regulation actually is absolutely already here and is picking up speed at an incredible pace. Uh, so I think we're in a moment where that mismatch of speed is actually being pretty effectively addressed at a lot of different regulatory levels. Um, so excited to give you an overview of the landscape and then I'm gonna get super tactical about how you all can actually start to adopt AI in a way that uh, is compliant with regulation today and will set you up for future regulatory compliance. So with that, great. So I actually, a, a little background about me. I'm, I'm currently head of product at a company called Credo AI. We build responsible AI assessment tools that help organizations understand whether their AI systems are meeting not only regulatory requirements, but also uh, ethical requirements or requirements from their customers. Um, we like to say that we're helping you put your AI principles into practice. And my background is very much in the enterprise AI space. I've been working in enterprise AI for the last seven years uh, since it was just beginning to get adopted by the enterprise. And let me tell you, seven years ago, nobody knew anything about the issues that are on this slide, or they were pretty poorly understood. Uh, when I first started working around algorithmic bias detection and mitigation, I had banks tell me that they absolutely did not want me telling them that their models had bias in them because as soon as they learned about that bias, they were liable to do something. You know, luckily today, things are changing a little bit. There's a lot more awareness around these issues. And that awareness is coming in, in significant part from these headlines that we see almost every week, uh, certainly every month in a different industry there's some kind of public AI scandal, right? Some issue that comes to light. And so actually the general population is now far more aware of issues around algorithmic bias, around data drift, uh, uh, and these, um, this public awareness is really driving customer demand for responsible AI, for addressing these challenges. We work with a lot of companies at Credo AI that are just getting started on developing AI governance practices and they tell us that their number one reason for starting is not to address emerging regulations, that's a nice side effect, but it's really to build trust with their customers because their customers are refusing to buy their products, to work with them, unless they feel confident that the AI systems that they're gonna be buying or working with are compliant, are fair, are performant. Uh, and so this, this market demand is also driving the regulatory landscape. And as I mentioned, AI regulation is already here. This slide, I think, is just a, a fraction of the action, the activity that's happening in the regulatory landscape today. Um, but there are significant regulations that are both already here and on the horizon. You know, probably top of everybody's mind is the EU AI Act. There's been a lot of movement around that this week with a new draft being released by the European Parliament. Uh, but the EU AI Act is really just one example of a sweeping AI regulation. There's actually a lot more activity happening, as uh, was mentioned in the previous talk, at the local and state level and in industry-specific regulations. So SR 11.7, I know there are a lot of folks from the financial services industry here. Uh, SR 11.7 is long overdue for a major update to address the new challenges that come with AI ML models. And that's something that's actively being discussed and that banks are actively figuring out how to continue to comply with. Uh, we see a lot of direction coming from uh, regulatory bodies like the FTC around specific applications in retail or consumer products. 
and increasingly we're seeing more movement with HR. We've already talked extensively about the New York City algorithmic hiring law today. But these are all examples of real AI regulations that are already here that organizations need to figure out how to comply with. Uh, and of course, this is not just happening in the US or the EU, but truly globally. You can see from this slide that there are a huge number of countries that have said that AI is a top regulatory concern and priority for them. Uh, and I think 2022 is really going to be a landmark year for seeing global sweeping AI regulations emerge all around the world. Now, what are some of the trends that we can see in, in all of these regulations emerging? Well, I think there are, are there are really two key things that, that we need to think about when we think about these regulatory trends. The first is one that we see whenever there's an early innovation that's starting to get regulated, which is that the primary regulatory focus today is really on self-regulation and reporting and increasing transparency. Now, there are a lot of sort of theory-based uh, reasons for this around policymaking. One is that um, industry is still figuring out what best practices actually are for managing the risks associated with AI. And so regulators want to allow industry best practices to emerge and then select from the best uh, things that come out of industry's decisions and codify that into standards. So in this interim period where we want to have regulation, but we do not yet have best practices to codify into standards, there's going to be a, a period where there are transparency requirements, reporting requirements, but not necessarily specific transparency or reporting requirements. The New York City algorithmic hiring law is a great example of this. They specify that any uh, employ automated employment decision tool has to go through an annual bias audit. That's about it. They don't tell you what should be in that bias audit. They do tell you that it's got to be about disparate impact, but there's very little guidance on what actual technical processes you need to use to do that disparate impact analysis, what data sets are acceptable. There's a lot that is left up to the decisions of employers and HR automated decision tool providers. And there's a reason for this. It's so that employers and providers can propose processes and, and uh, start to develop best practices around how to do this. Regulators want that to happen and then to sort of cherry pick from the best option. Um, so that's a key theme. You know, there are very few codified hardened standards today. It's really about transparency or reporting at this stage. Now, the next uh, trend is a really interesting one. It's around the importance of context in defining regulatory requirements. The EU AI Act and the Algorithmic Accountability Act um, here in the US are both two great examples of regulations that prioritize use case context, the actual application of the AI system, above all else in determining how that system should be regulated. The EU AI Act regulates very specifically high-risk AI use cases. The Algorithmic Accountability Act calls these critical decisions, but there's a very similar mapping across those two regulations around what fits into those categories. It's things like employment decisions, uh, financial services decisions, things that are really fundamentally impactful to individuals, to humans. Uh, and so this focus on context as the driver for regulation also means that we are never, I, I feel confident saying this, we are never going to see a one-size-fits-all set of AI regulations that cover every single type of model, every single type of use case. We're going to continue to see use case-specific regulations. And organizations that are building and deploying AI ML will be responsible for deeply understanding the use case context of their models in determining how those models need to be governed. So these are some of the regulatory trends that we're seeing. Now another thing that I want to highlight in the regulatory landscape, we've talked about the importance of transparency and the emergence of self-regulatory reporting as a critical um, priority of these regulations. Algorithmic impact assessments are becoming sort of the reporting tool of choice for many governments and regulatory bodies. Uh, Canada has really pioneered this. They have some great uh, case studies around their adoption within the government, the Canadian government, of algorithmic impact assessments for AI tools that the government is procuring. Um, and the UK also has done a lot of good work on this. 
So basically, an algorithmic impact assessment is a, a particular format of reporting that looks specifically at the potential risks and harms of an AI system and attempts to uh, identify a mitigation strategy that is going to effectively combat those risks and harms. And so an, AI, uh, an algorithmic impact assessment, an AIA, is a very specific set of actions. It's more of a process than a report that needs to be taken during the development life cycle. And it includes things like consulting impacted communities, speaking to the people who are actually gonna be impacted by your AI systems or interacting with your models and understanding what the potential harms are from their perspective. Uh, it includes things like making sure that before you go into any kind of development of models, you have a very clear set of criteria based on those potential risks and harms for how your system needs to operate, how it needs to behave. So if you aren't familiar with algorithmic impact assessments and you wanna read more, there are a lot of good documents emerging, but this is a really important sort of reporting tool to keep in mind, especially if you're operating within a regulated industry where there are increasing transparency requirements. Okay, we're, we've made record time here. We've just covered the entire AI regulatory landscape uh, in about five minutes. I want to now transition into talking about how you can actually start to prepare for complying with these regulations, and not just the regulations that are emerging today, but future regulations that are going to harden and become more strongly enforced as time goes on. So the real answer that I want to give you all, the solution to the challenges that we just discussed with Albert, is to adopt a responsible AI development life cycle within your organization. Now, what the heck does that even mean? There are a lot of different words for this. Responsible AI is my phrase of choice, my term of choice. Some people call this ethical AI. Uh, you know, fairness is a, a critical concern here, but um, responsible AI is, is more than just fairness. It's more than just explainability. There are a set of six tenets that make an AI system responsible. And these tenets you can see on the screen are fairness, transparency, safety, privacy, social and environmental risk, which you could also call unintended consequences, and accountability. And a responsible AI development life cycle measures and manages each one of these six tenets at every stage of development. So we talked way long ago in the morning about the pre-development, during development, and post-development activities that a data science team needs to do. Those activities need to include responsible AI assessments at every stage. And the other critical thing about responsible AI assessment is that it needs to be a multi-stakeholder activity. I'll talk about this a little bit more, but this is not something that a data scientist or an ML engineer does alone. It's not something that a compliance officer or a legal team does alone. It is truly a multi-stakeholder activity. So how do you actually incorporate a responsible AI development into your current process and practices? So at Credo AI, we like to think about responsible AI as a three-step process that happens continuously throughout your development life cycle and then into uh, production and, and through monitoring and deployment. So, the first step is that you have to align on your responsible AI requirements. Now, those requirements need to become acceptance criteria just as any other aspect of this AI system is an acceptance criterion. For example, performance. Most companies, when they start to build a machine learning model, they know what target they wanna hit. You know, they wanna have 99% accuracy uh, because that's better than what humans can do and that's what's gonna make this machine learning model ROI positive. But in addition to performance, if you truly want to adopt responsible AI and be a responsible AI shop, you need to have acceptance criteria around your fairness needs, around your privacy needs, your security needs, and you need to have uh, specific metrics and thresholds as much as possible that you are tracking and doing trade-off analysis with all of the other metrics that are critical to business success. Uh, I say that we talked a little bit about trade-offs briefly um, around fairness and accuracy. There are trade-offs across all six of these tenets and things like performance 
And so your trade-off analysis really needs to include responsible AI metrics. Now, once you've aligned on your requirements, you actually need to assess your data sets, your models, and your development process to ensure that those requirements are being met. And this is where your technical teams are gonna be, yes, running technical assessments using open source libraries like the Audit ML, uh, or the Audit AI library that Pymetrics has developed. There are lots of great open source libraries out there. But there's also interrogation into people and processes. Accountability is a very critical aspect of developing a responsible AI system. And if you do not have a system in place to hold individuals accountable for each one of those six responsible AI tenants during your development life cycle, you're missing a really critical component of the responsible AI development process. So in addition to technical assessments, you need to do process assessment and you need to have a chain of accountability, an audit trail to understand who did what, who made what decision when, and why. And then the last piece, once you've done that assessment, you're gonna end up with some kind of gap analysis. Unless you're absolutely perfect on every single uh, tenant, there's gonna be some, um, there are gonna be some issues that you discover. And so that's where the continuous part of this cycle comes into play. In order to effectively manage risk and compliance that's identified by those gaps, you need to come up with a mitigation plan that often is going to feed back into your responsible AI requirements and kick off this process all over again. And so if you determine, let's just give an example. If you have a credit risk prediction model that you have determined through assessment is making biased predictions, it's routinely predicting lower credit scores for people of color that are interacting with the system. You need to come up with a mitigation strategy because the Fair Credit Reporting Act is gonna tell you, you cannot put that model into production. And so you can come up with a mitigation plan that involves you know, addressing issues of bias in your data. Maybe you're gonna balance your data set better. You're gonna go out and try to collect more data for the groups that are experiencing the bias impact. There are a lot of things that you can do, but those things need to get fed back into new requirements for your system that need to get checked again, assessed again, and that will come up with a new set of gaps. Hopefully you will have addressed the initial challenges and you'll be able to move on to the next set of issues. So, you know, machine learning systems are not static systems. This is why it's a continuous cycle. You need to be going through this cycle, not just while you're developing the model and using it to develop a better, more compliant, less risky model, but once your model is in production, you need to ensure that it's continuing to meet your responsible AI requirements, your responsible AI criteria. So I know that sounds like a lot, right? That's probably pretty different from what your organizations are doing today related to developing AI ML. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of enterprise AI ML development processes and I can tell you almost none of them truly look like this at scale. And that's because AI governance is a journey. Uh, we put it on this nice little pyramid at Credo AI. Salesforce also has their own model of this. There are a lot of models of this being released by groups that are thinking about responsible AI. Um, the very first stage of the pyramid is exploring. And this is the stage that most enterprises are in today. They're becoming more aware of the potential risks of AI. They're probably starting to adopt a set of AI principles at a high level within their organization. Maybe they're even doing things like forming an internal AI ethics board or an external AI ethics board. That is all great. That is all a critical foundational step. But in order to actually move up the pyramid, right, and get to governing at scale, you need to take those high level principles, that high level understanding of risk, and truly operationalize it. You need to assign responsible individuals you need to identify metrics and thresholds, and you need to adopt tools and processes within your business that will hold people accountable for that. And so at Credo AI, we work with companies across this entire scale. I will say, most organizations are somewhere between exploring and formalizing. I have not seen any organization, even an advanced, high-tech, AI-first organization that is truly governing at scale, yet. We are in the early days of the responsible AI ecosystem. We're in the early days of AI governance adoption. But if I leave you all with one note, it is that we cannot be in the early days for too much longer because the AI regulation isn't coming. It's 
here. And as Albert warned us all very, very darkly, you know, there are going to be real consequences in the future for not proactively adopting these processes, for not proactively addressing these risks. And so with that, I am happy to um, say that there are a couple of really tactical things that you can do, even if you're in that aligning <laughs> uh, part of the pyramid. There are five things that I think everybody in this room ideally could go out and start doing today, even if you have nothing, even if you are a, a very AI immature organization. The first is multi-stakeholder collaboration. Gather a team of technical folks, data scientists, machine learning engineers, product managers, and legal folks, people from your legal team, people from your compliance team. Bring them together to start to discuss what your organization's AI principles and responsible AI practices need to be. And I say that it has to be multi-stakeholder because there are very challenging multidisciplinary questions that you have to answer as part of this process. It's not just about understanding technical definitions of fairness and having a PhD in machine learning. You also need to deeply understand your regulatory landscape and the regulations and legal requirements that your company is subject to. So if you don't have that team together, that multi-stakeholder team yet, that is the first thing that I recommend you do. Two, this is surprisingly a difficult one for, for a lot of organizations. Most companies don't have a single source of truth for understanding where AIML is deployed across their entire organization. Particularly large enterprises have been operating with incredibly fragmented technical AIML infrastructure for a long time. As that infrastructure consolidates and companies adopt you know, a single model registry or a, a single source of truth, this is going to get easier. But if you do not currently know where AIML is deployed across your entire organization, that's you know, priority number one. Figure out where the problems could arise. So coming up with that model registry and aligning your model registry with a use case registry, so you have context overlaid on top, is essential for being able to actually govern these systems. Now three, once you have that full list, you can start to identify, based on that context, what are the highest risk systems? What should I prioritize first in terms of ensuring that it's meeting my requirements? Uh, and for a lot of organizations, these high risk systems are probably gonna come from their HR department. Uh, there are a lot of HR applications that constitute as high risk. Uh, financial services companies, of course, also have things like credit decisioning systems that are gonna be high risk. Um, but most of our customers find that they're gonna start this work in HR. The last thing, uh, the last two things. Establish accountability structures. I talked about accountability as a critical component of success here. You need to identify the accountable individuals, both at the project level, at the application level, and for your entire organization. I have seen AI governance efforts fail because there was not enough decision-making power given to the people who were put in charge. These people who are put in charge of your AI governance program need to have the decision-making power to pull the plug. They need to have the decision-making power to pause models that are in development or in production. If you don't give them that power, this is a meaningless exercise. Then the last thing, five, uh, and this is the most challenging thing and where the most research work is happening right now. It's the problem we're trying to solve at Credo AI. You need to be able to measure every single aspect of responsible AI that your organization is working on, and you need to be able to uh, actually track those metrics over time and, and turn them into KPIs. So there's a lot of be research being done around the best ways to operationalize explainability about privacy preserving techniques in ML about addressing new security challenges like adversarial attacks. All of that is great and needs to be translated into measurable outcomes that your organization can track over time. Uh, so if you're not actually measuring whether or not your AI is responsible, you're not truly going to be able to move the needle. So with that, I know that we're all uh, very hungry and we're all ready to go to lunch. So that concludes my talk. I have you know, maybe a minute for a couple questions, but I'll also stick around afterwards for, for more questions if you'd like.